Hello, Lord Immolation. Thanks for the replies. Very interesting. It's always a pleasure to be um, to be differed with by someone uh, intelligent and rational and reasonable and decent, which you definitely uh, seem to be. And um, yeah, you you could get much more critical than you have gotten. I would not take offense about the ideas, especially since you you do make it pretty clear you're talking about ideas. I I am dismissive of metaphysics. I want to clarify two things, though. Uh, one, kind of an in interpersonal, not necessarily between you and me, but just me and anybody I'm talking with about this, is first of all, I don't mean to be dismissive of you because you have that idea, and I don't mean to be dismissive of metaphysics in the sense of, you know, any sort of a put down because you want to consider this. And uh, on the one hand, that's just, you know, trying to be respectful for your guys' positions, you know, including the fact that maybe I'm wrong, but in this case, I don't think there's really any chance uh, I'm wrong because of the way this stuff pieces together and it, the way I see it fitting together from starting with uh, perception as your starting point, the fact that we have perceptions and process them. But the other reason is that these, the, the topic, what we're calling metaphysics, is very important to me. I love to talk about the fundamentals of philosophy, okay? Uh, that's why I've spent so much time talking about epistemology here. I have lots of interests in philosophy, but these are foundational and speak to everything else. And so I talk about these things, and my complaint, what I'm dismissive of is not, you know, the law of identity or continuity or cause and effect or anything that somebody wants to propose, you know, mathematics, anything somebody wants to propose is some a priori truth or metaphysical uh, foundation for all knowledge. Um, I want to talk about those. I just don't believe they're metaphysical. Okay, they are. They are. Uh, they are still theories, like any physical theory. And if if we were in a world that was different, let's say we were trapped in a matrix, um, or forget that. Let's say we took somebody and created virtuality. We took somebody. <clears throat> Uh, maybe they didn't have a working body, but we knew how to take their brain and put them in this virtual reality. You know, if we didn't give any consistency, if every time you looked at an apple, uh, it was different, and then it was banana, and then, then it was a bunny, then um, you, you probably would not have a metaphysical faith in the law of identity. Okay, it's because of our experiences that we have. But... Um, So the thing really there is what I have an enmity for, really, in this is this the trend in which metaphysics is embedded, okay? And it's the trend of a priori truth and platonic forms, um, which is a general deification of human ideas, okay? That, that's plat platonic forms to me, you know, this perfect leaf. Uh, he was talking about the idea of a leaf. You know, he thought he was talking about some metaphysical form of a leaf. No, he was talking about an idea of a leaf. And he was thinking that his idea is the source, and that all the leaves are copies. And he had it backwards. All the millions of leaves are the source, and the copy is the form. We have an abstract copy, like a one copy fits all. It's far from the most perfect version. It's a simplification. It's a built-in error so that we can think about leaves, so that we don't get confused with all the individuality of a million leaves, and we can think of them in some sense as all one, in some sense as a category, the oneness is that they belong in this category. But of course, for Plato, it wasn't just that the category, no, the category had associated with it a perfect example of that category, an epitome. <clears throat> the thing is, these ideas are not metaphysics, they're, they're physics. Okay, they're principles that are drawn from reality. Okay, like, consider the cause and effect or continuity or, or the law of identity, A equals A. When we say these have to be true to think, then how do we question them? How do we question them? How can we have alternate versions for, for uh, what the metaphysics should be? whether it's a, a mathematical metaphysics, or if it's math, then should it be a set theory metaphysics? And, 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 uh, and what about the law of identity? The law of identity, uh, if, if we, that can be looked at in the real world. Uh, a equals A, well, 
we've been I've just been discussing with Thou Art that about rivers. Um, evidently, A doesn't always equal A because the river is the same river. You can say, no, I've got my metaphysics, so it's a different river, but that's nonsense. We're working back from our experiences. Uh, why would we have to say that's not a river? We're not allowed to name it, you know, because that's basically what you're saying. It's not the same river. I'm saying, no, I can construct a, a definition for river that'll match the way I've been using the word for a thousand years. Okay, so why doesn't, isn't that what river means? We've been using this word, and for it to have any meaning, it must have meant this. And we seem to have meaning. We talked about it. We told our children where to go. Go to the river and get some water. And they made it there and back. But, but I misled them because it was actually a different river. They should have gone somewhere else or not gone to the river at all. They should have said, Father, the, the river is no more. See, if the river was no more, I'd expect to go down there and see the system has gone away and there's no more water running. Okay, so... Um, but in the law of identity, okay, or cause and effect, the law of cause and effect, okay, so that's a metaphysical idea, and, and it's, it's an a priori thing, we just have to believe that to believe anything else, but isn't the concept of cause and effect changing? Hasn't, a law of con hasn't the law of cause and effect gone through a lot of trans, uh, transitions in its history? Don't we need to now re recognize that it's gone through another transition, that the quantum mechanical cause and effect is different from classical cause and effect, and the classical cause and effect even itself has a lot of changes through it. I mean, there used to be an idea of continuity with cause and effect. You know, I, th this is, isn't just floating here, I'm holding it, and I'm touching it, and it's from the contact. But we know now it's not, there isn't a real physical context, it's a magnetic contact. It's magnetism that stops my finger. I don't actually touch the cup, I touch the magnetic fields of the cup, with my magnetic fields, and, and it can't get any further. So there's an indirection. You know, and just in general, this law of a continuity, well, it turns out that under the discrete level, it's nothing but the transfer of energy. And this happens by particles that can carry energy, like photons, and the general interaction of energy with itself while in one state uh, of energy. It, uh, it's it is matter and has mass and behaves as mass and it's these interactions and it's not really like our traditional view of cause and effect because there's this discrete energy transfer and there's quantum randomness at that level so if I push on something there's a randomness as to when the energy of my pushing is transferred and when the energy uh, the, the Newtonian uh, elastic energy uh, or whatever you'd call it elastic forces uh, you know, push that energy back on me. There's quantum randomness as to when all that happens. There's not an instantaneous, I'm pushing and it happens. No, it's like there's a 